let's have another look at a flip vid. This time I'm looking at uh, some propaganda posters which portray Hitler as the saviour of the German people. Saving them from what and from who is something for you to think about as we grapple with these sources. The first source we're going to look at is the poster Es Liebe Deutschland. Pardon my bad German pronunciation, perhaps. Let's take a look at the poster. There it is. Very interesting poster. Now, before we progress, make a note in your OneNotes or wherever you're doing this work of what you consider to be the main features of this poster. Hit pause if you need to. I've always said to you, let's go to the caption first. And the caption's now displayed for you. So we've got some information about it. Es Liebe Deutschland is a Nazi propaganda poster, if you hadn't been able to work that out. Its artist's name is a guy, K. Stauber. We don't know his first name. It was published in Munich, Bavaria, in Germany in 1933. Now, there's some important things in there. Munich, the capital city of the German state of Bavaria, was a hotbed of National Socialism. In 1933, we know Hitler becomes Chancellor of Germany. So this is his rise to power. We've got a bit of context already for this artwork. Es liebe Deutschland best translates to long-lived Germany. Now there's multiple versions of this artwork online and that's worth having a little bit of a look at. This one I've got here is a copy of one that appeared in a university in Texas in their library. Take a moment again, think about if you need to add anything to your uh, notes about this image before we deconstruct it. Okay, let's pick out the main feature that leaps out of us. It's going to be very familiar to the audience of the time, and our main feature hopefully you identified as Hitler. Now, Hitler is clearly the leader here. He's leading a crowd. The leader is the Führer, and we know this becomes his title when he combines the role of Chancellor and President. Look closely at his eyes. His fist is clenched. There's a sense of vision, determination. His jaw is set. His hair is swept by the wind. There's something going on here. He's clearly moving forward. He's advancing to us, coming closer and closer. This says something to us as an audience. He's leading forward, pushing forward. He's advancing. And I guess the question is for us to work out where. Another feature that would have leapt out at you is the swastika or Hakenkreuz, the hooked cross, the symbol of the Nazi party very prominently displayed and displayed on multiple occasions in the imagery. It's even displayed in the frame at the top three times. See if you've identified those. In the background, we have a crowd of followers, clearly followers of Hitler. They're wearing brown shirts. This is our brown shirted Sturmabteilung, our SA, following Hitler, the Nazis. Hitler, the Führer leading his followers, leading them where? Now, there's a few cultural echoes coming up here, and I want you to think about what cultural echoes there might be. By a cultural echo, I mean something that's deep resting in our cultural background, our cultural understandings that this image references. It's an echo. It's not shouted at you. It's hinting at something from the past that's occurred previously. Let's have a look. The first cultural echo, well, part of the cultural echo, comes from the beams of light streaming down on the crowd and on Hitler. That idea of streaming down is important. We use phrases like this to unlock our cultural echoes. We have to play with the metaphors at times, especially in cartoons and propaganda posters. Let's pick up on another one. We have a bird silhouetted in the sun, but my question is raised, what type of bird is it in this occasion? There's also a bird in the top frame, if you have a look up here. I would suggest we've spoken about this bird before when we were talking about ancient Rome. This isn't the dove. This is more likely to be a reference to another bird. Often we see in our cultural understandings 
the idea of doves descending from the heavens, but this bird is more likely to be connected to the Roman eagle. And the Roman eagle, remember, was adopted as a Nazi symbol and a German symbol. You can even see it on the right-hand side here. The eagle has often been associated with Germany and a German emblem. So this bird that's silhouetted here is most likely to be an eagle. And that eagle, we should remember, is perhaps taking the place in our cultural understandings of a dove. So this is now hinting at a certain religious theme coming through in this imagery. In the background, on the left, we see a river. Now this isn't by accident. It's not like the artist has gone, well, let's put something in. I wonder what I could put there. Let's put a river in. There's something else happening. Now, let's think in terms of the geography of Germany. In my mind, I immediately know that Munich in Bavaria is very close to the Rhine River, and the Rhine River was an area that was, or the Rhine land was an area demilitarized by Germany after the Treaty of Versailles, and that the French allowed no German troops in there. Um, could be a reference to that. The Rhine is a very famous river in Germany. This post was produced in Munich. The Rhine River is near Munich, and so it fits. But interestingly, I don't think that cuts it. That's too much detailed knowledge. It works, but perhaps there's something else. So let's explore it a little further. So here's our image. We've already picked up on some religious overtones. Let's figure out what they are. And I'm going to suggest to you that this artwork has a cultural echo. It felt familiar to the Germans in the 1920s and 30s because our regular churchgoers and this was influenced by religious art that they would have seen every day in church paintings, frescoes on the walls of the traditional German churches, would be familiar with from stories. Very different from Australia, where our churches are quite modern. In Germany, they would have been very familiar with the Renaissance artworks and so on the time. So let's have a look and see if you can see any similarities. Take a look at those artworks. Pause the video in a moment and jot down what similarities you can see and think about how they might unlock some very detailed messages coming out of this Liebe Deutschland. OK, let's see what you've found. When I've looked at it, I've immediately identified a few features. And the first one, obviously, is our bird coming out of the sun above Hitler's head. Notice how it appears in these Renaissance artworks as well. Coming down from the sky onto Jesus in each of these Renaissance artworks is a dove. The artwork you're looking at here that's portrayed in uh, Renaissance times, this is the baptism of Jesus. It turns up in the Gospels, particularly, I'm going to reference soon, Luke's Gospel. So we've got our dove coming down from above and it settles above Jesus's head. It was a sign of something. Let's push on to the next point. The dove is coming from the heavens. And when we look at these artworks, we can see the heavens are represented as the place where God sits. So in different forms, three of these artworks have images of God and heaven. One is simply as the sun up into the top right hand side, possibly your left hand side of this video over here. We can see the dove coming out of the sun, almost exactly as we see in this Liebe Deutschland, which is very interesting. Two of the other images have God as the sun. By the way, God always portrayed in a patriarchal way. Definitely a bloke. There's no female gods there. So we have a bird coming from the heavens, sent by God to settle on the chosen one's head, on the Messiah's head. Let's have a look at something else. Notice that a river appears in all of these artworks. It's least easily seen in this artwork that appeared in the National Gallery in London. At least easily seen, but it's definitely there. And we know John the Baptist, who is present in all of these artworks, is the one who anoints Jesus as the chosen one. There he is, anointing Jesus. We've got God watching on, sending down a dove, 
while the chosen one is anointed. If we were to push this imagery over, I wonder who or what has anointed Jesus. I'm wondering why or what the message is about this bird coming down. I'm wondering now if Hitler is a chosen one as a Messiah. And I'm starting to think that given there was an election in 1933 that brought Hitler to power, maybe it's not John the Baptist who has anointed Jesus, but someone or something else. Maybe the poster artist Alba is suggesting Hitler was anointed by the German people. Maybe Hitler is suggesting, uh, the artist is suggesting that Hitler was anointed by the president, Paul von Hindenburg. Something to mull over there. We don't always have to have every answer explained. Posters, in a sense, are metaphors. So let's move on. Notice in all of these, we have a crowd of disciples, of followers. Now, it's again least obvious in this artwork from the National Gallery, but they're there. Now, we don't quite know who they are, but it would appear that the SA, the Sturmabteilung, the Nazis, the rank and file members of the Nazi party, are something like the Messiah's disciples when Hitler is the Messiah, the Saviour. By the way, I'm interested to note here that for all of the anti-Semitism of the Nazi party, they've not quite got their head around the irony that they've portrayed Hitler as Jesus, and Jesus, of course, was Jewish. Something to think about. I don't think they're quite thinking that. And it's certainly something I wouldn't make a big deal of if I had to write about this in an exam. But it's kind of ironic. Now, let's think about the Bible passage that would have gone with these artworks if you'd seen them in church. I picked one from Matthew. Matthew chapter 3 says, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who has spoken through the prophet Isaiah. So the prophet said, A voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, whom I love, and with him I am well pleased. Because that's how God speaks. I know. So if we think about this, think of the messages associated with Hitler here. He's chosen by God. God is pleased with his efforts. He's doing God's work. Are these all implied messages? Now, it's interesting, Stauber hasn't been overtly religious in this artwork and that's an interesting question most catholics most christians were not nazi supporters maybe there's an effort here for hitler and the nazis to try and win over catholics and christians subtly perhaps if they'd been overt this would have seen almost as blasphemous to say hitler was a jesus type figure Maybe that would have put Christians off, so they stopped a little bit short of using those religious words. It would mean easy for them to put a biblical quote instead of this Lieber Deutschland, if you think about it, and they chose not to. They are obviously thinking religion. Let's move on. So, I'm going to stop this video in a moment, but I'd like you to play with a few of these questions. They're the kind of questions that might help you unlock the course a little bit more. And I've alluded to some of the answers here in the video. Let's go through them very quickly. Here's one to think about. If Hitler is being portrayed by the NSDAP in propaganda as a Jesus, a savior figure, a messiah, who or what is he actually saving Germany from? Play with that idea. There's no one right answer. If Hitler was being portrayed by the Nazis as a chosen one, who was he chosen by and what was he chosen for? Another interesting idea to play with. What are the Nazis saying about themselves and their leadership? 
by drawing Hitler in this way. Stau has obviously done a very clever artwork. Play with these ideas. Now online, there's quite a lot of discussion about this, and some of the discussion is more informed than others. Wow, it's the internet. Who'd have thought not everyone knows what they're talking about? But there was an interesting hit that came up as I was looking into this source, which I've used before. And this particular writer suggested that a more appropriate poster slogan might have been this. This is my beloved son, hear him, from Luke's Gospel. And it's been variously translated, and we just saw it in Matthew's Gospel. I'd like you to think about that, and I think I've already alluded to some of the answer for you, and that is, why might the NSDAP have chosen not to actually use the biblical gospel words for their propaganda? Is there something they had thought about? I, I think there's probably been a meeting here and people have thought that goes in, that doesn't. It's a very, very expensive looking propaganda poster. I think there's been a bit of time and effort and they made a very clear decision of not using the biblical gospel words. Why not? So, Thank you very much for listening to this. We're going to continue with other videos shortly.